morning, Cloud Springs Baptist Church and all of you that are walk, watching by Facebook. We welcome you into the Cloud Springs Baptist Church. We're here to worship the Lord today in spirit and in truth. In a few minutes, our pastor will be bringing the word of God that we all desperately need in this time that we're living. I want you to worship with me today as we just sing a wonderful song, 10,000 Reasons. So glad that Brother Dave got to be here today and sing for us, and Eddie and uh, 
Everybody, Scott, back here playing the uh, guitar and Aiden playing the piano. Thank you for uh, David and I mean, uh, Charlie and Dalton getting all of our stuff going this morning. We had a little technical difficulty. These guys can figure out anything, and so they were able to do that, and I appreciate that so very much. Good to see uh, have you watching us this morning. I was texting someone early this morning, and they said, uh, you won't see me, but I'll see you. Well, I'm looking forward to forward to the day that I can see you again, and God's going to allow us to have that someday. If you have your Bibles this morning, go ahead and turn to the book of Luke chapter 24. We've been staying with that for a few days and uh, for the last few services that we had, and we're looking forward to continuing this wonderful story. Well, I know many of you <clears throat> have the question of when the church is going to open back up again. We're still taking in data and information and trying to figure that all out. And we'll figure it out someday. I know a lot of people have been uh, going out and going and doing things and everything else. I ask you, please be safe. Uh, try to do everything possible to keep yourself safe. Uh, stay the six foot distances, uh, wear a face mask, stuff like this. I believe it's better for you, if at all possible. If you can do that, it will really help. And it actually will help us to be able to open sooner. Uh, we're going to look in a couple more weeks. We've got to try to get some uh, material here and stuff that we need that will help us and also do some de general uh, information things around here to kind of get everything straightened up. Well, I want to ask you a question this morning. And the question is simply this, do you understand? Do you understand? Uh, we're living in one of the most complicated times of my life. And here I am, 60 years old, and... Uh, things are just different than ever before. And yet things are still the same. Things are still happening. Uh, this week I did a funeral. Last week I did a funeral. Got a funeral coming up here in a couple of days. Uh, Jackie of our church, her son suddenly passed away. Uh, Eddie Ramsey's grandson. And so I've got to do that. People going into the hospital. Uh, dear Miss Frankie of our church had to go in and she's still there. Going to be there for a few days. And hopefully come home soon. Uh, life is still going on and yet we have an added element of a pandemic that we don't understand. In the next few weeks we hope and pray that our medical professionals and our scientists will take all this information, compile it together, let some of the greatest thinking minds in America <clears throat> begin to look at all this information about COVID-19. The problem is that it takes time to do those types of things and time's a luxury that some people do not have. The other problem is that <clears throat> while we're still collecting and gathering information even as we speak, we don't have everything that we need to understand what to do. So we need to be able to look at this pandemic, this thing we're going through, with the best possible view. Most of us need to understand the reason we understand some things today is because we have a past history and we look back on history to see. None of us can see into the future, but we know what is happening right this second with us and what has happened in the past with us. So our understanding is limited a lot of times. So um, we're like this as people. We're always trying to determine and to <clears throat> figure out what is really right in front of us. Sometimes we can't figure it out what it is, why it is, or why it's happening. We can be watching it and not even understand. Sometimes we can have all the information and still can't see the right answer. Maybe it's because of weariness or boredom or maybe doubt and fear. Who knows? Sometimes we overlook the obvious or have forgotten what we've already known. That's common and really, especially with people who are under great stress and who are under heartache and heartbreak. Early this morning, someone texted me and they were sharing with me how they had prayed for someone and how God had answered their prayers over and over and over again. And they were reflecting back. And that's what we do <clears throat> as individuals. We reflect back on how everything is. Sometimes it's just hard to understand what's going on or what we're looking at. Sometimes we forget our past blessings and we only focus, we only focus on the issue at hand. 
Let's read our scripture right quickly this morning. Luke chapter 24, verses 38 through 46. And he said unto them, Jesus speaking, Why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your heart? Then he puts forth his hands. He says, See my hands, see my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bone as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed his hands and showed his feet. And while they still could not believe because of their joy and their amazement, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and he ate it before them. Now he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their mind to, and I love this word, understand the scripture. And he said to them, thus it is written, that Christ, that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead on the third day. So I want to ask you three simple questions this morning to get you to thinking. I hope that you'll take time to open that Bible up and take a notepad and sit there and write out a note or two that you can go back and reflect on. Somebody was reflecting back this morning and said, Preacher, 39 years ago I became born again. I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. They were worshiping in that way. They understand what this day means to them. So I hope that we'll understand a few things here in just a moment. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, your honor, your grace, your mercy. Father, thank you for being with us. And yes, Lord, please today open our understanding. Open it up in such a way that we can uh, see the present that you have brought us and what you're trying to give us and trying to help us with. Father, that day when you were before them, they had joy and amazement. Still was fear there and still was anxiety there, but yet joy over flooded them because they were seeing you. But Father, they still had that trouble understanding. So help us as you help them to understand. Father, open our eyes of wisdom, open our mind of knowledge, pour into it everything that we need this day. Help us, Lord, we pray in the name of Christ. And we all said together, amen. So number one is simply this. Do you understand what you need to know? You need to understand what you need to know. Now, a lot of us today don't understand everything that's going on. We don't understand how to move, where to move, when to congregate, when not to congregate. But it's always been that way in life. We fail to think about how everything works together because we're in our routine day of doing things that we no longer, if you will, think about it and how we should respond and how we should do things. We find in Luke 24, 8, and he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why are you troubled? Now, are you troubled today? Are you troubled about many things? Are you only looking around at the things that are happening right now instead of remembering what God has done and understanding what he's going to do for you. You see, we are troubled. We can take trouble and it will lead to doubt. Well, I wonder if this is going to happen or if that is going to happen. When we let our troubles <clears throat> excuse me, mount up in such a way and we let it overtake our life and overtake our souls, it begins to develop a doubt within us. Problems. You see, you can only accept what you can take in in small bites. Now, we know that we have a pandemic that's around the world. We understand that. That's what it means around the globe. But I'm going to ask you a question. Do you have a pandemic or do you have an issue within your family? Well, if you have five kids and there's a mom and dad there, when one child is sick, it is the concern of the parents as they watch over that child and it affects the whole family. So we need to understand that if we want to uh, affect or help or to nurture or to build up one another, we need to remember some things and understand that problems often make us look at that and focus only on that instead of what the remedy is. 
You see, some of us can only handle one slice of pie at a time when there's an eight-piece pie there. We're only seeing one part of the picture. You need to understand that God is in control. Ecclesiastes chapter number 3, verses 1 through 8. You've heard it before, most likely at a funeral, most likely at a remembrance, but it simply says this. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. There is an appointed time for everything. Now, do you understand? There's an appointed time for everything. No matter what's going to happen in life, there's an appointed time. This pandemic is not surprising to God. I often have said this. What would happen if God removed his hand for one second from us and the world? What would happen to us? Chaos would erupt. I wonder if God is not allowing us to understand some things that we need to trust in Him and rely on Him. There's an appointed time for everything. There's a time for every event under heaven. Wow, preacher, every event, that's what the Bible says. The Bible is true. It's the Word of God. So there is time for every event. Listen to this in verse number 2. There's a time to give birth and there's a time to die. There's a time to plant. And a time to pick up what's been planted. There's a time to kill and to heal, to tear down and to build up, to weep. And then there's a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace. And a time to shun from embracing. Well, we've seen that even recently, haven't we? Stay six foot away, keep apart from each other. It continues in verse 6 and said there's a time to search and a time to keep and time to give up that which is lost. There's a time to tear apart, time to sew together, a time to be silent. And there's a time to speak. I love what it says in verse number 8. There's a time to love. There's a time to hate. There's a time for war and a time for peace. I do not, I cannot tell you the number of folks have told me over the years I wished I had more time, time, time at home, or time here, or time there. And yes, some of these same folks are more anxious today because they do have time, and they don't know what to do with it. We worry, or we praise God one way or the other. I know some have been waiting on test results to come back, and, and that time was a long time. Every minute seems like it's worth three and when they get the answer, we praise God together with each and every one of them. You see, that happens when time is taking place. Do you know that during this pandemic, every minute has carried on with what it's supposed to do? Every hour has passed. Every sunrise and sunset has happened. Do you understand that there is time for everything under heaven? Our trials, our temptations, our doubt sometimes can lead us to think that we're not going to make it. If we only focus on our problem, our problem grows bigger each and every time, each and every minute, if we only focus on that. But if we take our eyes and begin to look at Him who can answer our prayers, He who's watched over us day and night, He who has taken care of us all the way up to this moment of time, if we place our trust, our faith, and put our eyes upon him, what happens? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter number 10 comes into effect. It says, No temptation has overtaken you, but that is such as common to man. And God is faithful. Now, folks, you may be in the midst of a storm, but you need to understand God is faithful. God's still on the throne. God still loves you. God still cares. God is still watching over you. He says, you will not be allowed to be tempted beyond your able. Tempted to doubt. Tempted to give up. Tempted to quit. He actually says you will not be able to come to that point that he will also provide a way for you to escape so that you'll be able to endure it. Some of you have been so worried. Some of you have been so fretful. I understand that. You've been so concerned. I understand that. This is a world-changing event. But can I tell you, he has the whole world in his hands? Can I tell you that God is still there? 
And he's still watching over you. So number two, right quickly, we need to understand what we need to see. You say, well, preacher, it looks like all doom and gloom. It looks all dark everywhere. Well, folks, it may not be nearly as dark as you think it is. Now, this is a bad time. I'm going to tell you that. This is a difficult situation. Uh, families cannot get together. Loved ones cannot get together. But we need to remember what we have seen and what we are seeing. So you need to understand what you need to see. In Luke 24, 39, Jesus said, See my hands and my feet. Now, I love it that he chose to show us this. Now, it's easy to understand. His hands were nailed to the cross. His feet was nailed to the cross. A spear was put in his side. A crown of thorns on his head. He was beaten beyond recognition as who he was. But here's what he says. Look at my hands and my feet. Well, what does it mean to look at his hands? Now, how many of you know what hands are for? A lot of times we use our hands, and Brother David did a few minutes ago, lifting his hands and praising the Lord. Brother Eddie and, and, and Brother Scott are playing instruments and they're using their hands for the glory of God. The hands are meant for touch and to feel, to lift up, to pull up, to hold up. Jesus said, look at my hands. He offered them to him, to them that were around him. And I want you to understand by just doing that, he's saying, I am he who was dead and yet now is alive. He handed them the answer they may have not been looking for, but it's the answer they needed. The hands represent a touch, but the feet represent to share. He walked everywhere he went, doing good and ministering the gospel of God. Do you understand that God is going to give us the opportunity again someday, again hopefully in the near future, that we can walk side by side. We can have fellowship one with another. Do you understand that Proverbs 30, verse number 5, said, says that every word of God is tested. He is a shield to those who take refuge in Him. You know how that feels? Do you know how that has felt since this started in our lives? We have run to God. I hope you have. If you've not, I challenge you to run to Him this morning. I like this a little bit better. Sometimes I believe God has run to us. I believe he has taken off and ran to us to help us and encourage us. You say, preacher, how, how can you say that? Have you ever been in that moment of despair when you've had the worst news you possibly could? And yet God held you together. God, the peace of God that passes understanding, came in, ushered itself into your life. There's a song out there by Phillips, Craig, and Dean. It says, he ran to me. And they take it from the scripture of Luke chapter 15 talking about the prodigal son, said that the father went out every morning or he opened back his curtain, if you will, of his house and he looked for his son and he said that he saw him coming from afar off in verse number 20. And he said, I'll get up and go to his father. That's what the prodigal said. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. I want you to understand, in your time of need, sometimes you may not be able to make it there, but I promise you, he can make it to where you're at. Amen? He can do that. If you'll just realize, if you'll just realize that Jesus is closer than you think. Listen to what Matthew chapter 4, verse number 4 said. Jesus was speaking, and he said that he answered unto the devil who was tempting him and trying him and trying to get him to turn. He said to, G he said to the devil, he said, listen, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You want to know how to understand some things today? Get in your wonderful Bible. Begin to read. And you say, preacher, where do I start? We'll start in John, the book of love. Let him love on you and help you and encourage you. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, For we are to be diligent to, to present ourselves a workman unto God who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of God. It says to be diligent, to stay with what has worked and worked and worked. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. Let me tell you something. God has always worked on our behalf. I'm not going to run somewhere else. 
I'm not going to depend upon the government. I'm not going to depend upon others. I'm going to depend upon God. And by applying the Word of God to my life, understanding what faith really is, understanding what strength really is, understanding what love really is, I become a workman. I can give out a word of encouragement. I can give out some hope. I can share the peace of God that passes understanding in my life with others. You say, preacher, how do you do that? Because you have to be filled with Him. Folks, I want you to understand that if we handle the Word of God rightly, it carries us all through our life. Number three, right quickly. You need to understand what you need to understand. <laughs> he said, preacher, that's... Uh, Kind of a funny statement. No, you need to understand what you understand. I understand how some things work. And so when I go to do whatever it is, this morning I got up and I went into the coffee pot and I filled it with water and I put coffee in a little paper thing and put it in top of the machine and I hit this button and a green light comes on. I understand if all the elements are there and everything is in working order, that in just a few minutes, I'll have a big old glass of hot coffee. And I'll be able to enjoy that and sip on it for a little bit. I need to understand that that's how that works. I need to understand that God loved me so much that he gave his only begotten son. Now, folks, I want to tell you something. I want you to listen to me real good right here now. I want to tell you something. God loves you so much that he gave his son. Do you understand that? Do you understand? In verse number 45 of our text this morning, talking about Jesus, and he said, he opened their minds to understand the scripture. He opened their minds to understand the scripture. Let me tell you what you need to do. You need to ask God to open your mind this morning to understand the scripture. Understand the times we're living in. Understand the issues we're dealing with. You say, preacher, is he going to share with me? He said he'll share the scripture with you and to help us understand and see things. We need to understand the scripture. Listen to what it says in Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. We need to understand the Word of God. The Word is the Bible. His Holy Word. Genesis to Revelation, without error, without problems, without mistakes, is the perfect Word of God. It says it's a lamp for dark days. How many of you in the last few weeks you felt down or you felt blue? Some of you have resorted to singing old songs that you, maybe you grew up with. Maybe it was a country song, maybe it was a rock and roll song, but I guarantee you I've heard a lot more people singing gospel songs recently than anything else. We need that reassurance. We need that which works. A lamp for dark days. Then it talks about being light. That's wisdom. If you want to know how to live, wisdom's in the Word of God. It'll tell you what to do, how to do, how to respond. Then it talks about a path. It's how we walk. Our everyday walk with God in faith. I trust God in all things. Not just some, but all. Job was the richest man of the Old Testament that we understand. He had it all. He lost it all. But what he said after he lost it all is probably more important than what he said before he had it all. His wife said, why don't you curse God and die? She was feeling for her husband. He was so hurting and so broken at this moment. Not because of what he had lost financially. You see, he lost seven children. And he was a broken man. And he simply responded to her, you speak as a foolish woman. We don't just praise God for the good things in life. We praise God for all things in life. Wow. That's hard. That's difficult. God opened my understanding that I can understand that. Help me, God. You see, we don't need to trust our own minds or trust our own hearts. We need to trust the Lord. 
Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. It says, trust the Lord with all your heart. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you something. How many of you know your heart's right about here in this area of your body? But to trust the Lord with all your heart begins from here to here. You see, what this believes, this will act upon. What this believes, this will serve. What this believes and trusts in, this will have confidence in. And it will make the difference. Trust the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean to your own understanding. Wow. If we lean to our own understanding today, some of us would give up. Some of us would give out. Some of us give away. <laughs> but what I want to do is give in. Give in to God. Trust Him. Verse number 6 says, In all your ways acknowledge Him. And here's what I like. It says, He'll make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn from evil. It will be a healing to your body and a refreshment to your bones. Folks, there's some things we need to understand what we understand. Here it is simply like this. Luke 24, 46. And Jesus said unto them, Thus it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead on the third day. Let me tell you, the word of God is true. The Word of God is real. The Word of God is the only answer you need. Now, folks, I pray. I pray that you will listen to the Word of God and understand what He's trying to do for you in this time. I love the old song, simple song. We sing it often here. Jesus loves me, this I know. Can I tell you? Jesus loves you this morning. I don't care what you're going through, what you've been through. Jesus loves you, and he cares for you. Let me pray for you. I love you, too. I just want to share that with Cloud Springs Baptist Church. All you from the nation, from the up north to out west to the east coast to the south, thank you for being with us. God loves you, and he wants to change your life. He wants to make it what it needs to be for you. I pray that you will turn to Him if you don't know Him. If you do know Him, I pray that you'll praise Him today and honor Him with everything you do. We love you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for your love, mercy, and grace. Help us to be the people you called us the people to be. And let's be the people we need to be for a world that needs to see what believers look like trusting you. Father, help our people to stay safe and be careful. Bless those that are having to stay home. Bless those that are having to work. Watch over them. Father, be with the families where death has come this week. Those that are in the hospital, be with them. Those that are celebrating birthdays in Christ, I praise you for them. Father, I ask you to do this. Help us in our land, in our tragedies. Help the world, I pray. I know you've been trying to. We've not listened very well. But, Father, I think you've got some of our attention now. So help us to develop and follow the plan you've called us to do. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you in the name of your living Son, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good day. God bless you. Come back and see us next Sunday morning. We're praying for you.